one of the crucial moments in the big history of the world was the crossing of Wallace's line by modern humans some 50 to 60,000 years ago. Wallace's line is the boundary caused by impassable deep sea trenches that separates the Asian and Australian biogeographical regions and passes between Bali and Lombok, west of Sulawesi and east of the Philippines. This resulted in the development of spectacularly different species in Australia and New Guinea because it was isolated from the rest of the world. The arriving humans took advantage of the lower sea levels that dominated the Pleistocene, which made a crossing from the Indonesian islands easier. When the first people arrived on the Australian continent, it was cooler and drier than at present. In fact, it was in the grip of a period of cooling related to the last Ice Age cycle. People migrated swiftly through the continent, taking advantage of lower sea level. They encountered strange animals and now extinct megafauna, such as the marsupial lion, the protodon and a giant koana. The now submerged coastal plains probably had a vegetation cover not dissimilar from today's coastal areas. Inland, the Aboriginal settlers probably followed the water along rivers and lake systems such as Lake Eyre and the Willandra Lakes. People were hunter-gatherers and moved a fair bit around, going where they were plentiful of resources. However, after 35,000 years ago, global temperatures started to plunge, culminating in the last glacial maximum, or LGM, about 20,000 years ago. The Australian continent entered its driest and coolest period of at least the past 125,000 years. How did Australian populations respond to such climate change over the past 50,000 years? It is this question that Alan Williams, an archaeologist and graduate student in the Fenner School of Environment and Society at the Australian National University, is trying to answer. On episode 63 of Exploring Environmental History, Alan talks about his research that investigates the links and relationships between Aboriginal population dynamics and their response to climate change over the past 50,000 years. Listen to this podcast episode on the Environmental History Resources website or subscribe in iTunes. Thank you.